Hello and welcome. My name is Kelly. I own Dog Kind Training. We specialize in very fearful dogs, feral dogs, puppy mill rescues, street dogs. And today we are talking about what behaviors to focus on if one of your goals is to build confidence. Reinforce your dog's strengths. This is part two. Which behaviors should you choose when training for confidence? This is for you if your dog is anxious or fearful. Your dog does several behaviors frequently that you could choose to reinforce to build confidence, but you'd like to start by focusing on maybe one behavior to make it simpler for you, but you're not sure which one to choose. How do we build confidence in dogs? Well, a confident feeling may be a product of success, repeated success, and what makes a dog successful? Dogs are successful when their skills work to get good stuff, or in other words, when their behaviors are followed by positive reinforcement. So positive reinforcement training, in my opinion, is the way to go if what you are looking for, or at least part of your goal, is to build confidence. Ways to start today, and we talked about this in the last video, identify one behavior your dog is already pretty good at and does frequently, and then prepare yourself so that you're ready to reinforce that behavior pretty consistently throughout the day and across environments. Now, there are times when the actual physical environment might provide the reinforcement, in which case you would just need to make sure that the environment is set up in such a way that your dog does in fact come across positive reinforcers when doing the behavior that you're trying to reinforce. From last time, a quick reminder that the behaviors I focused on with Pancake early on, I reinforced eating behavior, sniffing out food, and looking at me. And so these behaviors don't have to be anything difficult or complicated, they can be pretty simple. So how do you decide, if you do have several behaviors to choose from, how do you decide what to focus on? You don't actually have to pick just one behavior, you can certainly feel free to reinforce several behaviors, but if what you would like is to focus on one thing at a time, or at least start with one thing, the first thing I would ask is, what is your dog really good at right now? What do they do frequently right now? And by that I mean, don't choose something that your dog does kind of well sometimes, but other times they do it in such a way that you ask them to try again rather than giving them the treat when you're doing training. Look for something that you're likely to feel good about giving that treat for pretty much every time your dog does it. Second, I like to think about what is portable, which behaviors are more portable, and by that I mean can the behavior be done on leash, off leash, at home, outside, while stationary, while moving? If the behavior is very portable in the sense, then it will be useful to you and you'll have lots of opportunities to reinforce it. And finally, what is multi-purpose? And this is a little different from what I was calling portable. This is really usefulness. Is it something that you would ask for and that would be useful at home, out on walks, at the veterinarian's office, in the car? If a behavior is something that would be helpful in all of those situations, then it's pretty multi-purpose. Going back to Pancake's example, the three behaviors I looked at, eating behavior, sniffing, and looking at me, if we turn this lens of these three criteria onto those behaviors, so was Pancake good at eating? Yes, he was plenty good at eating. He wasn't very good at eating in my presence, but he could eat just fine in some situations. Eating is very portable. You can, your dog can eat treats just about anywhere. And it's extremely multi-purpose. In fact, it is required for any positive reinforcement training in which the reinforcer is going to be food. Sniffing behavior, again, Pancake was good at this. It is a behavior that can be done lots of places. It's a little less multi-purpose than eating because there are some situations in which having your dog sniff the floor or the ground may not be desirable. For instance, during a vet exam, you might want them to not be uh, moving around and sniffing. Look at me is another one that Pancake was, was plenty good at. He would look up at me anytime I entered a room or made a noise. It is something that can be done just about anywhere and while the dog is moving or stationary. It's very multi-purpose as well. You can use it as an alternative behavior or as one piece of a chain of behaviors in problem scenarios where your dog might otherwise uh, do behaviors that you don't love, like they see a dog on a walk instead of barking at the dog, look at me. Oh, a visitor's coming into the house. Instead of starting barking, 
just look at me and then we'll move away together. So it can be part of the solution for some of those problem scenarios. Looking at an example, say we have a dog who is pretty good at sit, hand touch, and recall. I'm going to assume that our hypothetical dog is good at all of these. So we're trying to decide which one to start with in our training. Hand touch is very portable. You can do it indoors, outdoors with a stationary dog, with a moving dog. Sit can only really be done with a stationary dog. And recall usually involves quite a bit more movement. So hand touch is the most portable of these three. All three are quite multi-purpose though. They can all be used in a lot of different situations. So I think they're all quite useful. Action steps for you this week. If you are trying to settle on one behavior to start, to focus on reinforcing more often so that your dog is getting more reinforcement in their day, they're succeeding more frequently. If you're going to just do one behavior, pick the one your dog is best at. Ideally, pick one that can be used on the go, so away from home as well as at home. And if you have a choice of behaviors that are pretty portable and your dog is good at, try to choose one that is very useful across lots of scenarios. I hope this helps. Don't forget to grab your free guide, Caring for Your Fearful Dog, at dogkindtraining.com care. And I'll see you next time.